Legends of Runeterra seemed like it was poised to make waves in the card game scene when it released in 2020. The gameplay was an interesting middle ground between the game's two primary competitors, Hearthstone and of course Magic the Gathering. The back and forth round structure ensured a faster paced game than Magic, which was ultimately designed for in-person play, but it did still allow for more interaction and on-the-spot decision making than Hearthstone's extreme streamlining of the genre. The game brought a level of polish and quality in both art and presentation that few games can match even today, and the blossoming community seemed excited to see where Runeterra would go next. But in 2024, the game is essentially in hospice care, living out its final days with little dignity and even less hope. Now how did it get to this point? Most people will give you a long list of Riot's business missteps, from not launching the game in China, which is its biggest region, to stubbornly refusing to traditionally monetize the game via PAX, and a failure to commit to a specific vision for the game. While all of these reasons are completely legitimate, at this point my claim is that the reason for Runeterra's impending doom is actually much simpler. If it's not fun, why bother? Now let me explain. Sound the retreat and prepare for tomorrow. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Upon release, Legends of Runeterra received both hype and praise from card game players and League of Legends players alike. As somebody that fit into both of those camps, a League card game had been very high on my list of dream games for some time, and I talked the game up to no end to anybody that would listen. As time went on, however, I found myself playing the game less and less until eventually expansions were coming and going without me even seeing them. Yet every time I returned to the game, it felt the exact same. Stale, no matter how long I had been away. Now, as a lifelong fan of card games, deck building and creativity aren't just an upside of card games, they're almost the whole point. Though I am often happy to pilot a meta deck with just a few variations, I enjoy myself the most when I'm able to take down meta leaders with a cobbled together pile of cards that were power crept before my opponent's deck was even printed, or just a common card from a new set that went overlooked by the community at large. Early in the game's lifespan, champion cards, the highest rarity, were often the flashiest, with special level up animations and more complex or powerful effects than cards of lower rarities. But this was typical of any card game, and it wasn't until the first couple expansions released that I began to see just how much of a problem the focus on champion rarity cards was going to be. Though many champions from the base set had been useful in a multitude of circumstances, available to be slotted into a variety of decks when you needed a win condition or a value piece, Expansions didn't take long to establish a very concerning theme. Champions were shipped alongside a supporting cast of lower rarity cards that were specifically designed to be played with their respective new champion. Not only that, but some champions were designed around a specific keyword that was only shared by one or two other champions, effectively locking you into specific champion combinations. Though these newer, more focused mechanics were often initially entertaining, many of the decks felt entirely pre-constructed, and as champions became more and more complex, the amount of attention given to champion cards became more and more top-heavy. The Legends of Runeterra's most universally praised quality is its visual and audio presentation, with a genuinely beautiful artwork, impressive animations, and well-acted voice lines. This level of quality eventually became a bit of a curse. Champion cards took much longer than the average card to make, and evidently took a significant amount of the game's budget, lowering the volume of cards that could be included in a single expansion in the process. While most other card games feature expansions with hundreds of cards releasing multiple times a year, Legends of Runeterra's biggest sets featured less than 150 new cards, with newer expansions featuring less than 75 sometimes less than 50. Champion animations became more and more complex, gradually growing from something charming to something that took away from the gameplay. Most notoriously, the Shirima Ascension deck featured what was referred to as the Shirima movie, 
often playing four cinematics back to back before you could finish your turn. That deck in particular was hugely popular for a while, but never particularly strong, thanks in part to another unfortunate pattern that champion cards brought into existence. Smaller expansions meant less cards, and once Riot was done adding new champions and a supporting cast of cards for whatever new archetype they were cooking up, there were very few card slots, if any, available to support existing archetypes, either for balancing purposes or just to keep them fresh. One deck that I particularly enjoyed was Maokai Nautilus, a pair of characters with fantastic lore and visual design backed by a pair of equally interesting keywords that encouraged milling your own deck in order to summon deep sea monsters and eventually destroy your opponent's deck if left unchecked. Unfortunately, the next couple expansions featured entirely new mechanics with barely a mention of deep or toss. This pattern has held for the rest of the game's lifespan. Each set boasted a new suite of keywords and mechanics, the vast majority of which receive barely a mention for the rest of the game's lifespan, regardless of popularity or viability. Champions that don't receive strong enough supporting cards become obsolete, and a weak champion card can drag down an entire archetype with them. Now if Riot doesn't deem your strategy worthy of a champion at all, those cards will remain in limbo, almost entirely unplayable. All of this has a drastic effect on gameplay and presumably on player retention. Deck building is extremely linear, and while net decking is the norm in most other card games nowadays, Runeterra hardly leaves you any other option. Lists like Maokai Nautilus don't even require you to look up a list, since there are so few genuine choices to make when you're throwing all of the deep cards in a pile. This means that not only are you playing lists that lack creativity or variation, but your opponents are too which makes popular matchups all the more repetitive. The reliance on champion synergy also makes modes like draft or sealed virtually impossible, removing another avenue of play that captures the attention of many veteran players in other games. The lack of card volume also prevents Riot from rotating entire sets in and out of the standard rotation. Instead, they rotate individual cards in a futile attempt to shake up the meta while retaining most of the card pool. Of course, many of these problems are due to Riot's commitment to keeping the game free-to-play friendly, which is a commitment that I once admired but I have begun to realize is strangely self-defeating. Their commitment to not charging for any cards means they're working with a much smaller budget than other card games, and Riot has been extremely transparent over the years about the fact that their game just isn't making money, supposedly for the sake of the players. Of course, Riot is now shutting the game down, but stays committed to this idea that any form of functional monetization would be predatory. But the thing about a supposed predatory business model that a competitor like Hearthstone employs is that a financially successful game can afford to print more cards, and a game with more cards can afford to give away more cards. Now, if game A gives all 50 cards of its 50 card expansion away for free, and game B gives away 50 cards of its 250 card expansion away for free, are players from game B really suffering from having more choices? While many of the champions in Legends of Runeterra fit only into a single deck, legendaries in Hearthstone can often fit into a handful of decks, sometimes half a dozen. And many decks don't even require legendaries at all, allowing new players to immediately make a wider range of choices in deck building. Ironic. Underneath these fatal flaws is a genuinely interesting game. When I heard the game was shutting down soon, I hadn't given it much thought in years, but I was honestly sad to hear that it wasn't going to last much longer. I booted up the game and was wowed all over again by the quality of the art and the new champion designs, especially the ones that I play in League. I was hooked all over again, but gradually, actually sort of quickly, I just sort of stopped playing. While it was initially quite enjoyable, it didn't take long for many of the problems I mentioned in this video to come rushing back into focus. Even though I know that in theory I'll miss the game once it's gone, I can't really bring myself to play it for very long. Other card games just have too much to offer right now, and Riot seems to prefer watching their game crash and burn than compromise on their vision of a game full of expensive cinematics that has no way of making money. 
So I guess it's time to put Legends of Runeterra behind me and focus more on other games that are being managed a little bit better. So look forward to more videos about other card games soon. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe and thanks for watching.